This program was recorded with a live audience. Please forgive the occasional sound fluctuations. Hello and welcome. It is an honor and a joy to be here with you tonight. I'm going to talk tonight about the totality of possibilities. And that means that tonight we're going to stretch our minds a little bit. Let's stretch beyond where you were when you got up this morning. Are you ready to do that? All right. So let's talk about what I call the totality of possibilities. Not just a few possibilities, not a little possibility, but the totality of possibilities. Think about that for a moment. What does that conjure up for you? What do you feel when you hear that? I learned that phrase when I lived in New York City many years ago from one of my early teachers, Eric Pace. He used to talk about the totality of possibilities, and I see it as no limitations at all. Where I am and where you are is the totality of possibilities far beyond the limited thinking of our human mind. Our human mind is very small, and it's very limited, and it's what we dwell in now, but it isn't all that we are. Those of us who have been studying for some time, we know we are part of infinite intelligence, infinite intelligence that is everywhere equally present and knows everything, past, present, and future. And there are possibilities that we can't conceive of with our limited human thinking, but they're there. I mean, after all, spaceships were here when Cleopatra was around. They just didn't know how to get it together. And there's stuff out there right now that we don't know how to get together, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. The totality of possibilities is exactly where we are. And yet most of us sit in our little human minds, and our human mind is always thinking of limitations. Always. It's saying it can't be done that way. Well, why not? There's not enough. We hear that so much. And yet we know that God is unlimited. So how can there be not enough? Nobody's ever done it that way. Well, so what? Now it's time for somebody to do it. I'm not strong enough, young enough, tall enough, good enough. I'm not the right sex. How often have we heard men can't do that, women can't do that? And yet we know that that's nonsense because for everything we've said a woman can't do, some woman is doing it. And for everything we've heard that a man can't do, there is some man doing it. I don't have the right education. How many times have we bought into that as our limitation? I bought into that for years because I was a high school dropout. And I believed I couldn't think, and I didn't have any mind, and I didn't know anything, and that I wasn't as good as people who had gone to school. And then one day I discovered that that wasn't true. And when I dropped my limitation, I found that I had an incredible mind and I could think and that I could communicate. But I was the one that was limiting me, not anybody else. I remember when I first discovered the Church of Religious Science and they said to me, if you change your thinking, you can change your life. And I believed it. And then the thing was to find out how to do that. The more I was willing to change my thinking, which is really dropping our limitations, the easier it was to move into the totality of possibilities, which is already here. How about the limitation, I don't have enough money? God knows we've done that one enough. And yet, you know, too often we say, I can't do such and such because I don't have the money. And we limit ourselves at the financial level when what we really want is to do something else. And we do all this struggle for the money which we don't believe we deserve, and we never get to do what we really want. 
Whereas if we would bypass that limitation and say, I know that where I am is the totality of possibilities and I can experience this, then we could go right toward it. Then the other one that's so wonderful and I really love is, what will the neighbors think? What will the neighbors think? Well, they may not approve. And so what? So what? Who's living your life? Are you living your life for your neighbors? If you go beyond what your neighbors think, you may pick them up. Because when they see what you're doing in your life, they may come to you instead of condemning you. They may say, what are you doing? I want to know. Because I see what you're doing. I see how your life is changing. I see where you're prospering. I see where you're healing yourself. Come and tell me what you're doing. When we help ourselves, we can help our neighbors. Where God is, all things are possible. And we know that God is everywhere, beyond the universe. Our minds get so limited. We think sometimes that our neighborhood is everything, or our city is everything, or our state, or our country. And some of us can expand to the whole planet. But then we forget that planet Earth is a tiny little pinpoint in a far-off corner of a minor galaxy. And there are a hundred billion galaxies in the universe that we know of. And where God is, all things are possible. And God is everywhere. So how can we limit ourselves to our bodies? or our neighborhood, or anything else. When we stand and say, I can't, or my parents didn't do it, or what would the neighbors think, then we're stuck. When we see something happen, do we immediately go to our preconceived ideas? If you see somebody that is sick, do you immediately start with, oh, poor thing, how you must be suffering? Or do you look at them and see the absolute truth of their being and know that the health of God is within them and can express through them? And this is the true experience for them. Do you give them the totality of possibilities? See, when we see someone suffering, we don't want to bring ourselves down to that level because if we do, we cannot really help them. I spend my life seeing the truth in people and it's amazing the number of people that get it and work with it. What we do with our minds is incredibly important. In fact, that's the whole thing that we're talking about, what we do with our minds. Our minds are creative. We can create anything with our minds. We can change all circumstances. We can go in any direction. We can walk on coals when we didn't know we could. I mean, everybody knows it's impossible to walk on hot coals, and yet there are people that are doing it. How many people have heard about walking on hot coals? All right, how many people here have done it? Not many, but some. There are some people here that have done it, and we know it's impossible, and yet there are people on this planet today doing it, starting with Tony Robbins, who is teaching people how to do it in one evening. Our minds are capable of so much more than we think. So we know that our thoughts are creative, and this is one of the most important laws of nature that we can possibly know. Remember, one idle thought does not mean very much. But thoughts that we think over and over are like drops of water, and at first there's just a few, but after a while you create a puddle, and then a pond, and then a lake, and then an ocean. And by our thinking, if it is negative, we can drown in a sea of negativity. Or if it is positive, we can float on the ocean of life. And it all has to do with how we use our thoughts to think. Now, do you live in the limitations of your past consciousness? Many, many, many people come to a point in life where they say, that's it. 
In fact, lots of us don't realize, but many of us put limitations on what life is and who we are and where we can go by the time we are five years old. We make our mental decisions by five. Basically, we make our limitations and we say, this is it. And we don't let new stuff in. And if you're living by your past limitations, how can you possibly go into the totality of possibilities? How often do you live at the limitations of your parents' consciousness? My mommy, my daddy couldn't do this. They didn't go beyond this. This is what they said. You want to realize that whether they were the worst parents in the world or they were the best parents in the world, they had their own set of limitations and you don't want to limit yourself by that. An affirmation that I've given many, many people to use is, I am willing to go beyond my parents' limitations. You can love them and you don't have to live where their limitations are. We create our own reality. We do this by the thoughts we think and the words we speak. And when we can really understand that, we have the ability to make changes. So is our reality one of limitations and lack and I can'ts? Or is our reality one of the totality of possibilities? How much do we allow ourselves to stretch? When you have a problem, do you immediately set up the walls of your limitations, your mental limitations, or do you go through them? Are you using the tools you have learned? Or when there is a problem, do you immediately jump back to the old reactions? And where are your limits? Where do you see your limits? Remember, all fears are limitations, all fears. We put those up and it's like we have this wall around us that we can't go through. And not only can we not go through, but nothing can get in. Nothing can get in. All prejudices are limitations, all of them. We limit ourselves by saying somebody's not good enough. How can that be true? when all souls are equal. The soul has no color and the soul has no sexuality at all. So we want to go beyond that kind of limitation. All judgments and criticisms are limitations. When we judge another person, when we criticize another person, we are putting a wall up and no way can good come to us when we judge ourselves, when we criticize ourselves, it's like we've slammed a steel door down. And how can good come into our life? How can the totality of possibilities really operate when we're putting up our walls and our limitations? All guilts are limitations, all guilts. And we can't do that. There is no point in getting into guilt. If you've really done something in your life that's terrible, don't do it again. Just don't do it anymore. Guilt is a way of holding on to the past. And when you live in the past, you are not in the totality of possibilities. The present moment gives you the opportunity to move into the future. You can't live in the future either. You can only live here because this is where everything is happening, right here. See, when you are unwilling to forgive, you place limits on your growth. And yes, there are many of us that have things that are extraordinarily difficult to forgive. And yet it is part of our evolution and our growth. I've said this many times and I really believe it. I think we come to this planet many times to learn whatever lessons we need to learn. And for some of us, it's like coming to kindergarten. It's real simple and we just skip through life and it's easy. And for many of us, it's like going to graduate school and the lessons are much tougher. And yet we come in with everything we need to handle every situation that there will be. And we want to know that. We don't want to put limits on ourselves. Remember, 
problems are opportunities for growth that we give ourselves. And they're either payback from past negative thinking, because remember, it's a very simple law of life. What you give out comes back. It may come back right away. It may not come back for a week or a month or five or ten years. But what you give out is going to come back. And if it's coming back as payback, then you've got to deal with it. Or there are things where, experiences where we test ourselves. Now, a lot of us have been doing a lot of work on ourselves. I know that. And, you know, we work on an issue and we say, oh, I'm going to clear this. And you do your meditation and your affirmation, etc. And you say, that's over with. I've cleared that. It's done. I'll never have to deal with that again, thank God. <laughs> but how do you know you've really cleared it if you don't test yourself? So you've got to realize that whatever problem you work on and say, that's it, I'm really clearing it, you know, I'll never do it again, you've got to test yourself to find out if you've really done it. So you create it one more time to see how you're going to react. Now what happens with many people is the problem comes up and they jump back to the old way of reacting. And then on top of that, they beat themselves up and say, oh, all this work I've done and see, I haven't gotten anywhere. I'm right where I used to be. You know, thrash, thrash. <laughs> and that many people do that. But what we have to realize is that it's not that. It's a little test to see how are we going to react to it. Are we going to go into our old pattern? Or are we going to go into the affirmations that we have learned, the new statements and the new truths about ourselves that we've decided are going to be true for ourselves? So if you find yourself in a problem when you think you've cleared it totally, realize you're just giving yourself an opportunity to, to react to this problem in a new way. Because the moment you do that, it's going to disappear very quickly. I don't care whether it's a health problem or a finance problem or a relationship problem. You immediately go into your positive affirmations, whatever they may be for you. And know that, no, this isn't the truth for me. And it's only an issue that something, remember, every problem has a solution. And this is something I can deal with. All is well in my world. This is a temporary thing. I'm working through it. You know, and you're not a bad person, ever. See, do we see only the limits do we go into, oh, poor me, here it goes again? Well, if, if, it is, if it is a continuous thing, then it means that this is a lesson that we haven't learned yet. That's all it means. So we need to do a little work on it. See, do we see limits or do we open ourselves to possibilities? Tremendous possibilities. There are so many ways we can do things. Remember, we don't have to always know how things are to be worked out. We just need to be willing. Doesn't matter what the problem is, you don't have to figure out the how, but be willing to change, be willing to let go, be willing to open yourself to something new. We can trust and we can know. We can trust and know things like all is well, and everything is working out for the best. Everything is working out for the best. And stay with that. See, I think it's essential that we move away from our limited thinking or beliefs or we're going to be left behind. It's time for us to develop a more cosmic view of life. The consciousness development movement now is happening now on a scale that it has never happened before. It's overtaking the informational development enormously. I saw a chart not so long ago that just fascinated me, and it was a graph that showed the development that has been going on since the beginning of recorded history. And there was this long stretch, long, long stretch of the agricultural movement where people just dug in the ground for their food, period. Then we had the industrial movement, and it came and the graph started to go up. And it went a certain way. And then somewhere, I think it's in about the 50s, we began what we call the informational thing. This is when computers and all the things that can communicate around the planet so quickly came along. And all of a sudden, the graph starts to do this. But at about the same time as that was happening, there's another thing that's beginning to happen. 
about 20 years now. And the graph is incredible because it's the consciousness raising movement and it's going like this. Consciousness raising is going up at an incredible rate and this is happening all over the planet. It's absolutely amazing. I have do a lot of traveling. I go many, many places and wherever I go, I see people that are studying, learning, fascinated with how their minds work and what they can do to begin to take control of their minds and of their life and their experiences. I've been to Australia, I've been to Jerusalem, I've been to London and Paris and Amsterdam. I've been all over the place. And everywhere I go, I meet large groups of people. And they're not coming just to hear me, but they already know this. So we're, we're searching everywhere. We want to know how our minds work and what we can do to increase things. Religions used to keep us separate. In fact, they still do in many parts of the world, and Ireland is a good example of that. But the, the new levels of spirituality that are happening are beginning to connect us all. There are soul connections being made all over the planet. And we are always being connected with like-minded people. Remember, every time you think a thought, every time you say something, it goes out from you. And it connects with like-minded people who are doing the same thing. So every time you meditate, you are connecting with other people all over the planet that are meditating. Every time you do a visualization for your health, or your family, or your city, or your country, you are connecting with other people on the planet that are doing the same thing. Every time we do positive affirmations, we are connecting with other people who are doing positive affirmations. As we feel our oneness with all of life, we move to new levels of awareness. And we can't do this if we allow ourselves to be stuck in the judgments and the prejudices and the guilts and the fears. Remember, every time you are into prejudice, your thoughts, your words are going out and con connecting with like-minded people that are doing the same thing. Every time you're judgmental, you connect with people who are doing that. Every time you're critical, you connect with other people that are doing that. And every time you get into guilt, you're also connecting with that. So who is it, what kind of like-minded people do we want to be connected with? See, we have to begin to understand that our minds are so powerful. And not only do we contribute to our own experiences, but we also contribute to everything on the planet. You know, the planet is in terrible shape at the moment. We have nuclear threat, we have acid rain and holes in the ozone layer, uh, the fish are dying, half the vegetation isn't fit to eat, and then we complain. What are we doing on a day-to-day -day mental level to help heal this planet? I mean, we've created things like Epstein-Barr and AIDS, and we push people away and say, oh, it's their problem. But what are we doing? Every thought we're thinking is contributing to this planet on some level. And what sort of like-minded people do we want to be part of? The totality of possibilities are awaiting us. Think about that, the totality of possibilities. You know, they tell us we only use 10% of our brain. And my question always is, what is the other 90% for? What's it waiting for? It's sitting there waiting for us. See, I think that space travel is only beginning. And inner space travel is also only beginning. So what are you doing with your minds to break barriers? Are you willing to let go of your limitations and your fears? Are you willing to open up? What do you want to do with that 90% of your brain? You know, the thing I'm really working for is to help create a planet where it is safe for us to love each other. 
I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's true, where we can be loved and accepted exactly as we are, where we love and accept ourselves. But we're not going to find this from other people unless we're willing to give it to ourselves. And when we start doing that, when we can get to a point where most of the planet is practicing unconditional love, then we will get the other 90%. Because at the moment, if we had more powers, we would find more ways to torture and kill each other. We're not ready for it. Now, we, you know, we're at a very, very difficult place on the planet right now, and we can contribute to the end of the planet, everything going down the drain, or we can contribute to the healing of the planet. Are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to practice that? Or do you want to hold on to that self-righteous stuff? See, it doesn't matter whether you're right or you're not right. Because the person that you're really hurting is you. And if you're hurting, you're going to connect with other people on the planet that are hurting. And is that the sort of friends you want to have? See, one of the things I want is I want everybody to have their act together, to feel healthy, to be filled with joy, to be loved and to be prosperous. Think what a wonderful world that's going to be for me. And I think if we think, if we're more conscious of that, that what we're giving out is coming back to us, and think about the sort of world we want to live in, we'd be more willing to forgive, and we might be a little more willing to practice, to the best of our ability, unconditional love, which just means accepting other people as they are. Isn't that what you want? Don't you want people to accept you exactly as you are? How far are we willing to go with expanding the horizons of our thinking? See, are you willing to go beyond your neighbors? Or do you have to stay just where they are? Is that what's comfortable for you? That might mean that you don't get to grow because those neighbors may not want to grow. You might want to connect with other people. What sort of like-minded people do you want to connect with? And how far will you stretch? How often do you go beyond your present limits? Do you stop at I can't? Or do you say to yourself, well, maybe this time I can? Just maybe this time I can. We have a wonderful television show out in California called There Is A Way. And every time I hear that, I always think, yes, there is a way. There is always a way. There is always a new and better way, a different way, if only we're open to it. Virginia Satir, the wonderful family therapist, once did a study, and she discovered that there were over 250 different ways to wash dishes. <laughs> depending on who was washing them and what the equipment was that was being used. You know, how many times have we heard people say, this way, this is the only way. There's only one way to do it. <laughs> if we open ourselves to learning something new, then we can grow and we change. Or do we already know it all? Trouble with knowing it all is you don't get to grow and nothing new can come in. Do you really accept that there's a power and an intelligence greater than you are? Or do you think you're the whole thing? See, if you think that you're it, then of course you're frightened. Of course. <laughs> I thought I had to run this whole world all by myself. <laughs> but if you realize that there's a power and an intelligence in this universe, this world, that's far greater and brighter and smarter than you are, and is on your side, then you can move into that mental space where the totality of possibilities can operate. The tools that we use are our thoughts and our words. 
Every time you think, you're shaping your future. Now catch the thought you're thinking right now. Do you want that one to come back to you as an experience? <laughs> when you catch yourself doing negative thinking, scaring yourself, or being furious at other people, and you catch it, just say to yourself, I don't want to do that anymore. I really don't want to do that anymore. I want to create a really wonderful world for myself. And then start thinking the sort of thoughts and about the sort of world that you would like to live in. See, too often we complain about the world, but we don't talk about what we'd really like. And then think, what can I do in my mind to do that, to help that? We do affirmations, we declare, we treat, we do meditations, we do visualizations that open us to new possibilities. What do we need to know for ourselves? What do we need to affirm for ourselves? Let me give you some ideas. I live and dwell in the totality of possibilities. Where I am, there is all good. All good, not some, but all. And I open myself to the totality of possibilities in every area of my life. In my health, I go beyond age. I absolutely refuse to be limited by numbers. I go beyond medical opinion. Because remember, that's exactly what it is. It isn't the truth of your being, it is medical opinion channeled through a particular person, which is the popular belief of the day. I won't be limited by that, I refuse to. I go beyond incurable. Incurable only means that they don't know how to cure it at the moment. It doesn't mean it is incurable. There are all... Someone somewhere on this planet has been healed of every single dis-ease that we've been able to create. Everything, and we have to know that. See, if we don't give ourselves possibilities, if we don't give ourselves hope, if we don't take a positive approach to things, how are we going to find the answers? If we just accept doom and gloom, then we're stuck then we're stuck. You know, it's interesting, in the beginning, everybody was dying of AIDS because they were told they were. Now it's a few years later, and many, many, many people are living with AIDS. They're finding ways to do this. And if we know it can be done for some, we can find the ways to do it for more. All right, I go beyond statistics. I am not numbers on a chart. I am a divine, magnificent expression of life, and so are you. We're not numbers on a chart. That's just somebody doing a projection. I go beyond my parents' limitations. You can love your parents and go beyond whatever their limited beliefs were or whether they, they may have believed in disease, or there may be a family pattern of disease, but you can go beyond their limitations. You don't have to stay with that. I move to the totality of possibilities in the area of health for myself, and I declare I feel glorious, vibrant energy. I feel active and alive. I move easily and effortlessly. I love and appreciate my beautiful body. I am glowing health personified. That's for all of us. And in my relationships, I go beyond loneliness. There are billions of people on this planet. How can I be lonely unless I put a wall up around myself? I go beyond fear. I am willing to reach out I go beyond anger, 
I go beyond resentment and hatred. I go beyond jealousy. There's plenty for everyone. I go beyond sadness and I go beyond self-pity. And I move into the totality of possibilities in the area of relationships for myself. And I unite with the billions of people on this planet. I flow through forgiveness into love. And love operates in all my relationships, from the most casual, when you buy a newspaper, you get a subway token, to the most intimate. I am love, and I am loved, and I am peaceful and safe. And in the area of creativity, I go beyond the feelings of not being good enough or capable enough. And I release all sense of competition or comparison. We are unique beings in life. There's never been another person like us since time began. So what is there to compare or compete with? All we need to do is be ourselves. I move into the totality of possibilities in the area of creativity for myself. And I allow the creative energy of the universe to flow through me, expressing in ways that are deeply satisfying to me. And whatever I do, it is more than good enough. And in my finances, I go beyond my present income. I know I'm not stuck there. I go beyond the, the economy doesn't matter what they're doing out there. I've, always, I've said for a long time, my income is constantly increasing. It's an affirmation I've used for a long time. I go beyond my parents' income level. You have a right to go to earn more than your parents did. Women have a lot of problems with that. Often they find it difficult to earn more than their father did. You can love your father and go beyond his income level. I go beyond any feelings that I do not deserve. And I move into the totality of possibilities in the area of finances for myself. And I accept the totality of financial possibilities. The totality of financial possibilities. I recognize the one source that flows through many channels and I release, realize that there is plenty for everyone, including me. You know, I use this image so often of standing before the ocean of life and you're there with a container in your hand and the container is up to you, how big you want it to be. And everybody else can be there also. And no matter how much you take, you can't rob the other person, they can't rob you. And nobody is going to drain the ocean dry. And if we can see life like that, that it's abundantly giving to us, and all we have to do is accept. I am open and receptive to all good. I allow my income to constantly expand, and I live comfortably and beautifully. I am the joy of life, expressing and receiving. Now let's stretch just a little bit more. And let's see the totality of possibilities for the planet. I envision a world of peace and plenty. See, if we take a moment every day just to think about the planet and to really see it healed and whole, Lazarus has a wonderful exercise. He suggests that people take a little place on the planet some place that you would like to take under your wing and help heal. And every day, you take 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, to just visualize that part of the planet being whole and complete. And it could be somewhere very far away and exotic. It could be Nicaragua or Siberia or whatever. Or it could be around the corner. But you decide that you want to help heal this planet. And you find your little space. And every day, you see it healthy and whole. 
So we envision a world of peace and plenty, and we feel harmony and unity between nations. And we contribute to that harmony that we desire. We see healings taking place everywhere. Take another moment every day and see a cure for AIDS being found. Put some positive energy into that. You know it's going to happen. It's just a question of when. Just for, again, 30 seconds once a day, see it somehow. Either uh, you see it on the television, or you read a newspaper, or you hear it on the radio, or a friend calls you, or you see the cover of Time magazine, something that says a cure for AIDS found. Let's help to create a world where it is safe for us to love each other. It's safe for us to love each other. And now I want to go a little bit further and see what you think. But I realize I'm aware of the infinity of life. To me, this is a normal, natural thing, that life goes on, that lifetime after lifetime, we experience different lessons, different things. We come back over and over again. That's what I believe. We come to work on our spiritual growth. So for a moment, let's envision our next experience on this planet. And let's choose what we want it to be. Let's see ourselves clearly in that next role. Let's choose our sexuality. Let's choose our color. Let's choose our place of birth. Let's choose our parents. Let's choose our relationships. What sort of people do you want in your life? Let's select our work, our purpose, and our satisfaction. Let's work towards our next lifetime now, because today creates my future. Today creates our future, now and forevermore. Because where we are, remember, is the totality of possibilities. Only we have to know it. All right, what I want to do now actually is take questions from you. I'm sure you have things you would like to ask me. Who has a question? Thank you, I'm so glad to be here. Me Please, too. I started listening to your tapes just a short while ago. Um, about six or eight weeks ago, I started listening to your morning and your nighttime meditations. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> excuse me, there has been a tremendous transformation in my life in a short period of time. My question is, um, I do listen to them every morning and every night. And I have fear thoughts that if I don't listen to them or I stop <laughs> listening to them... <clears throat> I guess I know what you're... You know what my question is, because I guess I'm not alone with it. Uh, what will happen? <laughs> First of all, I want you to realize that no book and no tape is going to save you. I mean, you know, people will say to me, oh, your tape saved my life or something, but that's ridiculous. A little piece of tape in a, in a plastic box is not saving your life. It's what you do with it. You know, I can give you ideas, but what you do with it is what's going to count. Remember, I'm not your healer. I'm not your savior. The only person who's going to make a change in your life is you, because you're the only person who lives in your mind. And what you want to do is to start changing some of those old patterns and get out some of that garbage and get some more positive stuff in there. And you're the only one who's going to do that. And I just want to give you ideas so that you can get your life together. Now, at this point, you probably know most of it. And you've heard it over and over and over again. And yet, even so, you can hear new things every so often. But if you don't listen to it a day or two, it's perfectly all right. When you're listening... <laughs> 
when, when you're listening to the tape, or when you're reading the book, or when you're doing affirmations, is wonderful. But what are you doing the other 23 hours and 40 minutes of the day? Because that's the stuff that's really going to count. It's wonderful. You know, we, we sit down and meditate, and then we get up and rush out on the subway and scream at somebody. <laughs> The meditation is wonderful, but the other time is most important too. And I'm sure whatever you're doing is right for you. Keep your goal, and if you concentrate mostly on loving yourself, if every morning when you get up you will say, how can I love myself more? Or go look in the mirror and say, I love you, and I want to love you more today. You know, keep that as a goal. Because if you keep centered on that, then the other things will take care of themselves much more quickly. Let's get the gentleman back there. Yes, okay. Kind of move around the room. First of all, I want to thank you for being who you are. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you know, I've had my own dark nights of the soul. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> my name is Joe. Yes, Joe. I studied to be a Roman Catholic priest at one time. I left because I felt spirituality was more than just religion and making rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a dream and I'm living in it because I believe that for all people that we need to encourage and love one another and I hope to have a holistic center out in the country for everyone to be able to discover who they are and what they're all about. The question that I have, right now I know I'm in the dream, and when I go to meditate, I am constantly coming up with a um, tremendous amount of negativity. I'm trying to release it. I'm trying to, I try to meditate, I can't. It's like um, I get a tremendous amount of pressure that I feel outside and also within, um, but I keep trying um, no matter what. Can you give me like some helpful, um, tip or whatever. Well, to... you know, it's just possible that there's a lot of negativity in there that needs to come up. And that when you quiet down enough, it starts to flow to the surface. And if you could just take it in that vein, it's like, okay, it's on its way out. It's just on its way out. I lovingly let it go. I release it. And just not try to fight it. Because it sounds to me like you're trying to say, you know, stop, stop. I want to meditate. But you are meditating. <laughs> You are meditating, and it will continue as long as it continues. When I first started to meditate, the first three weeks, I had violent headaches. It's just like it was so, it was against all that inner battle. And I just hung in there, and uh, it changed. And uh, it changed. It's, I find a lot of times when I try to force it or whatever, Okay. Um, that, you know, I can't do anything, no. so I just lay there and fall asleep. You see, meditation t to me is creating the space where you can sit down and listen to your own wisdom. Because remember, all of us have all the answers within us for all the questions we're going to ask. And usually we're too busy doing other things to listen to that wisdom. So what I do when I meditate is I sit down and I just go, all right, what is it I need to know? And I listen and let whatever comes up, comes up. And you might ask that too, what is it I need to know? You know, maybe a me the method of meditation you're using isn't right for you. Well, I think it's a lot of from the past, you know, you have to, you know, get rid of all that <laughs> and learn to know. Be but patient you. with yourself. Just be patient. Thank you. Okay. There's a gentleman up there. Hi. My name is Leslie. And yes, I Leslie. read you about a year ago. It was wonderful. I started law school. And my whole life I did acting, and through my parents' persuasion and what I thought was my own idea, I started law school about a month ago, and I stopped going to class this week. And uh, under a lot of stress from everyone around me, and um, decided to take an acting class because that's what I always wanted. And my problem, and I was having a lot of dreams where I was going somewhere, presumably to my career, and it was, I was just knowing that I was going nowhere except to misery and depression. 
and I just stopped going. My question is, I'm having a problem letting go of the doubts and the reservations about making the biggest mistake of my life that I'll never go back uh -huh. and be able Who, to change. Whose voice is that? My father told that to me last night. I think there are few people in this room who really understand where you're coming from. <laughs> You want to act and they want you to be a lawyer. You know, I'm, I'm at a point where I, I'm having a problem knowing what I want to do. I'm mm -hmm. so confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, you know, I just found myself saying what I used to say as a child to my father, which was, I just don't want it. I just yes. don't want it. I well, want you it. understand that this is his way of saying I love you. He wants you to be safe. And yeah. he believes that if you're a lawyer, you'll be safe and secure. That's what he wanted. That's what he wants. Mm -hmm. And you have to do what you want because it's your life. I would suggest that you sit down in front of a mirror. If you have a mirror that's on the back of a door, would be good, and sit down in front of it. Bathrooms are no good, you walk out too quickly. <laughs> but sit down in front of it and look in your eyes and say, I love you. Now, what is it you really want? Because I'm going to support you in every way that I can. And give yourself a little time to talk to yourself and connect with your inner person. And realize that you don't have to please anyone out there. What you really want to do is fulfill yourself. And you're worthy of that. And you can do that. And you can say to your father, I love you, and I don't want to be a lawyer. Thank you. You're worthy of it. Excuse me. All right, let's get the lady up there. I don't want to forget the balcony. I want to remember the balcony. You know, it's amazing how often when we want to remember something, we talk about forgetting it. Don't forget, don't forget. And what we're really saying is, please remember. <laughs> And when we say, don't forget, what's the first thing that happens? You forget it. <laughs> yes. Hi, Louise. I'm Kathy. Yes. Um, I'm about halfway through your book right now. And uh, for the first time, I talked to my mother this morning since I've read your book. And I've been doing really good. And then I noticed when I got off the phone from her, I was totally sucked back in. So I'm confronting my family with this stuff. Um, I'm an adult child of an alcoholic, and we're going through a lot of therapy. I think there are a lot of people, a lot of those in this room. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're going through a lot of therapy and, mm -hmm. you know, classes with AA and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up to have a family seminar with the family members only. So what I'm afraid of is talking to them about that stuff and this stuff at the same time. <laughs> um, and that's just what I wanted well, to ask you about. first this. of all, you know, you don't have any expectations. And stop projecting. Stay in the now and know that when it happens, it'll happen for the best. And realize that it's going to be difficult for your parents because they're dealing with a lot of guilt. And guilt brings up defenses. What you can do is keep doing affirmations that you have wonderful, harmonious, loving relationships with your parents, where there is respect and love on both sides and honesty. You make that a truth for yourself. And, no and every time the fear thoughts come up about what they're going to do, you come back into, I have wonderful, loving, harmonious relationships with my parents, you know, and we, we're honest and respectful of each other. And, and if, if you give your mother the space to be who she is without trying to change her, you will give her the opportunity to give you the same space. I got it. Thank you. Okay. You know, it's interesting. Thank you. It's interesting. Uh, we all want our parents to change. 
but we don't want to change for them to change us. You know, we loathe it when they try to change us, and yet we want to change them. So if you don't want them changing you, if you want them to accept you as you are, then you've got to accept them as they are. And after all, you're on the spiritual pathway, so you get to do the first step. <laughs> I'm going to take the man right in the middle here. Jim, can you bring him down? Yes. You stand up. The red tie. Hi. Hello. Two, two, can you stand up while you speak? Thank two you. brief questions. Uh, about a year ago, before I started all this, I had incredible instincts in my job. Mm -hmm. Right on, precise, direct. Now I f up every day. <laughs> and, it's, you know, and I attribute it to, uh, to this. Maybe it's time for you to move on. <laughs> maybe you're not as joyous in the job as you once were, and maybe it fulfilled you then, it doesn't fulfill you now. Are you angry at somebody there? Are you trying to get even with somebody? There's a, yeah. <laughs> the uh, second question is... Do you just want to keep making mistakes every day? Or <laughs> All right, let's have your second question. Thank you. The second question is uh, when I think I've cleared something out and I have uh, a, a good hold on it, I'll go to sleep and have dreams straight through the night about that negative thought and mm -hmm. or that action or that person mm -hmm. uh, all through the night. Well, you're working on it. You know, we work on a lot of stuff in our dreams. The things that we can't do in during waking hours, we do them during sleeping hours. Uh, it seems to me that you're, you're creating some chaos at work, and it would be good if you could straighten that out. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but again, you can do the same sort of thing I'm telling this lady here, that to affirm for yourself that you always have wonderful, harmonious relationships at work, and people really ex respect you, and are very appreciative of everything you do. You know, you want to create the stuff at work that you want. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's take this man here. And I'll get you next. I wanted to first thank you for the work that you've done. I know you've helped me a lot. And um, I listen to your tapes every night when I go to bed, and I was afraid tonight when you started talking, I'd fall asleep. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> your subconscious mind would hear everything. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you've, you've told me through your tapes and through your book that I am responsible for everything in my life, and I believe that. And uh, mm -hmm. tonight you were talking about uh, limitless possibilities mm -hmm. that, you know, that I can achieve anything I want in my life that's going to be healthy and that's going to be good for me. And um, I think what I find, like, my reaction to that when I sit down and start to visualize, like, mm -hmm. what it is that I would really want, you know, like, for instance, for me, um, dating is a really sensitive issue. It's nothing that I've ever gotten into, and it's something I've denied myself. You know, also having a good career, mm -hmm. you know, something that I can enjoy doing. And I find that I'm more afraid of the thought of actually achieving that and actually having that success than I am of, like, it's easier for me to go, my God, nobody wants me, I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. Than That's to a say, strong affirmation. You know, than to know <laughs> about it. But, you know, it's easier for me to, like, deal with that in some mm -hmm. way than it is to, like, notice that somebody's attracted to me or when someone offers me a job or an interview, that's more difficult for me to accept than, oh, well, I'll just be, like, waiting on tables until I drop. Can you give me any suggestion about what, you know, well, besides that, it sounds, stop to, me, it sounds to me like you have a str very strong belief in there that you do not deserve and I don't know, that probably came from your family somewhere. And, and on some level, you've got to be willing to let that go. 
and to move beyond that. If you will concentrate on working on loving yourself, you will begin to feel that you deserve because you will be worthwhile. You see, if so other people told you you couldn't have and then you deny yourself your own love, then the child inside really truly believes that it doesn't deserve anything good. Now, I know this, that I think it's in your program, you have a list of 10 ways to love yourself. People are always saying to me, how do you love yourself? Because I talk about it all the time. And number one on the list, the very most important thing is to stop criticizing yourself now and forevermore. Don't do it ever, ever, ever again. It doesn't help anything, it doesn't do anything, it just breaks down your inner spirit. Begin to accept yourself exactly as you are and to appreciate that person. And when you find yourself being critical, then just say, no, I don't want to do that anymore because I'm really ready to love myself. I'm willing to love myself. I'm willing to get to a point where I deserve good things in life. And the other information to add always for yourself is I am safe. I am safe. All is well. I am safe. All is well. I am safe. And breathe a lot. Have you ever been rebirthed? Have you ever had that experience? I have an intuitive feeling that might be very good for you. And if it comes your way, try it once and see if it doesn't help you break through that armor that you have there. Okay. Okay. Let's take the lady in the middle, the dark haired lady. I've been using your tapes for almost two years, and I, mm -hmm. I want to make a plug for Heal Your Body. I love my body. Mm -hmm. That little meditation book I use twice a day, it's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I've done a lot of growing in two years, but I still fall back into the sick little child syndrome. And right now I have an opportunity at the office, through my artwork, and through my relationship, to really grow, and I am growing, but I still feel sick. You know, I still fall back into this. I was sick as a child at two, and I have many physical ailments. Mm -hmm. And I push myself to do, really, what I want to be doing, mm -hmm. and I'm doing it. Did that get you love and affection when you were little and sick? Yeah. Can you get love and affection in a more positive way? Can you, can you be grown up enough to ask for it? Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. I really, I do begin to love myself for the very yes. first time through using this material, and I'm very grateful to you for that. Yeah. I just would like to feel, I guess, more safe in taking the risk and doing what I want to do. Okay. It's quite, it, it sounds like you need to grow up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, when anything goes off, you go run right back to being a two-year-old. And you've got to take, if you, the adult, could take the two-year-old by the hand and say, you know, we're going to work this out and it's okay, you're safe, and I love you, I love you. Thanks. Mm. You've got all the tools, it's just a question of you doing it now. You just have to do it. All right, the lady, the blonde lady over here. Hi. I've reached a place in my life that 95% of the time I'm content. I have a very, very hard relationship with my mother. I've, because my life has reached this place, I have not had my mother in, in my life. That's how I got there. Anyway, she yeah. now wants to come back. I mean, it's, it's, she wants to talk, she wants to be my friend, and I'm content without her. Mm -hmm. I don't want to... I just don't want to talk because of where I am and mm -hmm. what I have at this point. Well, can you tell her that you're not ready for that yet? Yeah, but she doesn't want to hear it. Well, She absolutely does not. And I'm not angry uh -huh. because I know we're two different people. I understand what her needs are, but her needs do not concur with what my needs are. Then, so. then you have to just tell her that. Tell her yeah. that you're just not ready for that yet and that you need some time. I think and it's going to take my whole life. I mean, and well, the, and you, no, you see, you're, you're making a limitation on yeah. that. Yeah. 
But, I mean, you have a right to tell her that you're just not ready to do that yet. And, and, and let it pass. Uh, no matter what the subject is, we can always approach it in a way that supports us. Because too often we feel that they, those people out there have a lot of power over us or the situations have a lot of power. And really everything in this, our life is a mirror of where we are in consciousness. So if you want to know what you believe about yourself and what you believe you deserve, then you look out there and you see what's in your world. And if things are not working in some area of your world, I would suggest you sit down and ask yourself, what is it I believe about this? What do I believe about business? And then just write down everything you believe about business. What do I believe about money? Write down that. What do I believe about uh, my relationship with my mother? What do I believe? And get, put everything down on paper and look at it. And then look at all the things that are negative and realize that those are the beliefs that you have in yourself that are keeping you from flowing in that area. So take each individual statement and begin to turn it into a positive. You start to shape in your mind the way you want your life to be. Now I'm not saying that everybody is going to heal themselves and everybody is going to just be incredible. But we can, all of us, improve the quality of our life in the here and now. We can make our lives better. And that is a wonderful thing. Some people will have very dramatic things happen, some people will have smaller things, but everybody can improve the quality of their life. Now, I want to close with a meditation tonight, and Jerry Florence is going to come and help me. Yes, okay. He's going to be on the piano and help me. Take a nice deep breath. Some of you know me well. And you've heard many, me say many of these things over and over again. Some of you have been working on yourself for a long time, so there's not too much new tonight. And some of you are very new. You've never seen me before, maybe never heard of me before. And I may have pushed your buttons, said things you didn't want to hear, said things that you think are too far out. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay. If you came here tonight and you heard one sentence that you can use and work with to help change your life, then this is wonderful. All we need is one idea. On this planet, we can be in a circle of hate, or we can be in a circle of love and healing. And I don't know about you, but I choose to be in a circle of love. I'd like you to reach out your hands and take the hand of the person next to you. that you are safe and just feel the energy in that hand in those hands and realize that that person wants the same things that you do they want to be healthy and whole they want to love and be loved they want to express themselves creatively in ways that are fulfilling they want to prosper. And they want to be peaceful and safe. I want you to send comforting thoughts to the person on either side of you. And as you do that, realize that the people
people on either side of you are sending you comforting thoughts. And in this room, we're getting a caring and a sharing moving. Moving around this room. Let the love from your heart begin to flow and move out in both directions so that this whole room, upstairs and downstairs, becomes an enormous circle of love. Feel it moving and feel yourself part of this circle. Now find that little place on the planet that you would like to help heal and see it very clearly in your mind's eye and see it as healed and whole the people at peace with plenty of food see it har harmony there healings taking place. And not only your little corner of the world that you want to help heal, but let's take the whole beautiful blue-green planet into our heart. send it love and realize that what we are giving out is returning to us we are connecting with other like-minded people and we are contributing to the healing of the planet and there are other people out there that are sending us love. So we give and we receive. And we allow ourselves to become whole. So it is.